Most briefly, natural selection refers to the process by which variability in reproductive success leads to changes in the overall genetic composition of the following generation. The selective pressures that act on a population, environmental, social, and so on, affect how many kids each individual has. Fitness under natural selection is determined by an individual's ability to reproduce, and to survive long enough to do that, obviously. The phrase survival of the fittest originally referred to this definition of fitness. Fitness, at a baseline, is a personal struggle, individual to the organism. You are more fit if you reproduce more, and perpetuating your genes by having your children is an effort that you undertake by yourself, with at least a little help from one other individual for those who reproduce sexually. The various pressures of natural selection are certainly acting on the level of the individual. There is what's called inclusive fitness, which encompasses at least the individuals around you who share your genetics, but it still comes down to one's own genes. No one is arguing about any of that. However, in ultrasocial animals like humans and eusocial animals like some insects and uh, two types of mole rat, uh, some people hypothesize that there was also selection at the group level. Which means that selective pressure was not just acting on the individual, but also at the level of the group. In cases where intergroup competition is really fierce, you could have entire hives, entire colonies, entire tribes competing against each other. If the fate of the group really is dependent upon that group cooperating, then it's not just every person or bee or mole rat for himself. The debate is whether or not selection can function on groups of organisms. Detractors of multi-level selection express doubt that individual organisms can congeal into superorganisms such that they operate as units upon which selection can act, even temporarily. Anyway, we're still working all this out.